Magnets have mesmerized humans ever since the first magnetic rocks were discovered eons ago in the area of ancient Greece called Magnesia. Today, school-age children are no less fascinated with magnets as they play with them and learn about their amazing properties. Mostly Magnets was written to take advantage of the built-in interest and excitement that magnets generate. Written for students in grades 3 through 6, the Ames publication provides more than 25 hands-on activities where students explore magnets and the magnetic fields that surround them. Organized in seven sections, this book does a thorough job of studying magnetism in all its various forms. The first section of the book provides important background information for the teacher and student alike. Here the teacher will find in-depth information on such topics as the Earth's magnetic poles, magnetic domains, magnetic fields and field lines, the connection between magnetism and electricity, and the important concept of magnetism as an interaction between two or more magnetic fields. Also included in this section are fact sheets, which can be duplicated and given to older students to read about things like how magnets are made, how they can lose their strength, and the interesting use of cow magnets by the dairy industry. This section also includes a page detailing sources for obtaining magnets. The ceramic ring magnets available from the Ames online store are recommended because they are quite strong and reasonably priced. Almost all the activities in this book can be done using ring magnets like the ones shown here. This section includes a number of engaging activities in which students learn what types of materials are attracted to magnets. These materials are called magnetic materials because magnets are able to induce magnetic fields in them. In these activities, students sort materials and classify them as magnetic, being attracted by a magnet, and non-magnetic. One of the surprising things that students may learn in doing this is that not all metals are magnetic, which is a common misconception. Several of the activities in this section have students quantifying how many uniform objects, like paper clips, a magnet can pick up. This leads to applying mathematics in the context, as students do things like finding averages, completing charts, and graphing their results. A culminating activity in this section challenges students to use magnets and magnetic materials to build a system that defies gravity. In this section, students explore interactions between two or more magnets. These activities are among the most compelling in the book. Students experience firsthand the attracting and repelling forces that occur when the magnetic fields of permanent magnets interact. Students will learn that magnets have north-seeking and south-seeking poles, which are more commonly called north and south poles. In these activities, they will discover that when like poles are near each other, they will repel, and when unlike poles are near each other, they will attract. The first few activities do this in a qualitative way as students feel the force of attraction and repulsion as they experience what happens when two magnetic fields interact. Next, there are several activities which quantify the attraction and repulsion using paperclip stems and spring scales. This section also has many opportunities for integrating mathematics in meaningful ways as students collect data, quantify these data, and make graphs and charts. In the next section, students explore magnetic fields. Although these fields are invisible, their effects are quite visible. The activities here demonstrate that magnetic fields pass right through non-magnetic materials. They also show that the strength of attraction is affected by distance, not the material through which it passes. These activities also help students learn that the force of attraction imparted by a magnetic field acts at a distance and, not, and does not have to be in direct contact to attract magnetic materials. This section includes an activity where students see the magnetic fields of a magnet by using a magnetic field viewer available from the Ames online store, and by sprinkling iron filings on a paper covering a magnet. The last activity allows students to directly feel the effects of magnetic fields as they get two refrigerator magnets to rattle. In this section, students learn how to make a magnet by stroking an object made of magnetic material with a permanent magnet. This causes some of the magnetic domains in the magnetic material to align, turning the object into a magnet. If objects made of soft magnetic material, like nails or the inexpensive scissors found in many classrooms, are used, the magnet created is quite weak and won't hold its magnetism long. The strength of these weak magnets can be quantified by how many small magnetic objects, like staples, they can pick up. 
If a hard magnetic material like the steel used in high quality scissors is stroked with a powerful permanent magnet, a strong and long lasting magnet is created. In fact, if you use a strong enough permanent magnet, it is not necessary to stroke the magnetic material. Simply touching the object with one of the poles of the magnet will turn the object into a fairly strong magnet. The magnets created this way can pick up paper clips or other similar sized magnetic objects. After learning how to make magnets, students make magnetic compasses in several different ways and then explore how these compasses align with the Earth's magnetic field. Next, students use a magnetic compass in some fun applications. The last activity in this section has students using a magnetic compass to detect the magnetic field surrounding a permanent magnet. The next section is titled Electricity and Magnetism. In some ways, it is the most important section of the book because it highlights the fact that these seemingly separate phenomena are just two aspects of the same fundamental electromagnetic force, a fact not known until the 19th century. Scientists now know that an electric current creates a magnetic field. Conversely, when a conducting material is in the presence of a moving magnetic field, an electric current is produced. In the first activity here, students use a nail, a battery, and a piece of wire to make an electromagnet. When the wire is coiled around the nail and attached to a battery, an electric current flows through the wire, creating a magnetic field that turns the nail into a temporary magnet. As long as a wire is connected, the electromagnet will hold on to small magnetic objects like paper clips. As soon as the current is stopped, the magnetic field stops and the paper clips will drop. In the next two activities, students use the electromagnetic force to build simple electric motors like the ones demonstrated here. The electric motors demonstrate that the electromagnetic force is used to create rotary motion. Spinner kits for these motors are available and easy to order from the Ames online store. The last section of the book contains several miscellaneous items, a list of other activities that can be done with magnets, an assessment of students' learning called What I Know About Magnets, an eight-page magnet book that can be duplicated for students, a glossary of magnetic terms, and a list of resources. The modern world quite literally runs on magnets. Magnets are used to generate our electricity, store information on our computer hard drives, and operate the solenoids that start our cars. Because magnetism plays such a key role in our modern technological society, students should learn about this important area of physical science. The Ames publication, Mostly Magnets, is the perfect tool to help your students in this study.